The Care of Patients in Disasters or Bioterrorism Attack, Chapter 44. The governmental agencies for disaster planning are the Department of Homeland Security, Office of Domestic Preparedness, Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the United States Public Health Service. There are special courses in civil defense and disaster nurse, nursing training that are offered by the Office of Emergency Services, the Red Cross, and professional organizations. These courses will help nursing and volunteer workers to understand the function and coordination of agencies involved in a particular type of a disaster. In reviewing disaster preparedness information, the nurse asks the community members, if there is a hurricane watch, what would you do? Bring inside any outdoor furniture, trash cans, potted plants, toys, and so on that could be picked up by the wind. Fill your car's gas tank. Have cash on hand. Check batteries and stock up on canned food, first aid supplies, drinking water, and medications. Stay in a mobile home. The correct answer, one, two, three, and four. Crisis standards of care were developed by the Institution of Medicine at the request of the United States Department of Health and Human Services. The Joint Commission requires that hospitals have an emergency preparedness plan in place. There are guidelines for emergency preparedness by the type of, fa of facility. This is the triaging system that is used in a disaster. Each patient is tagged to determine their necessity for medical care. When triaging, those individuals with life-threatening conditions and a good chance of survival are cared for first. When there are more victims of a disaster than medical personnel to treat them, those who are likely survived are treated first. These patients are given red, yellow, or green tags. The mortally wounded and those that are not expected to survive are tended to later and these patients are issued a black tag. The choices involved in issuing tags are difficult for most nurses, but in a disaster, the good of the many must prevail over the benefit of the few. Preparation and training are key to effective treatment of large volumes of patients. The nurse is held accountable to practice within the scope of their practice of the licensure and training when in the work setting. In the impact stage, survivors are stunned, apathetic, and disorganized. For several hours after the initial, the initial event, the survivors may have difficulty following directions and need strong support and firm guidance. In the heroic stage, individuals want to be helpful and may minimize or ignore their own injuries and demonstrate rescue behavior that is risky to themselves. In the honeymoon stage, the survivors are grateful that they are still alive. There is a strong sense of brotherhood and community spirit. In the disillusionment stage, the reality of loss occurs. Ongoing physical and emotional fatigue can result in substance abuse and discouragement. Survivors may feel abandoned and ignored by the larger community because of the gap between the resources and the need. In the reconstruction stage, which may continue for many years, people rebuild their lives and begin to see the crisis in retrospect as growth and an opportunity. A chemical emergency can occur from a transportation accident or an explosion at a chemical plant. Chemical agents may be inhaled gases, liquids, or solids that are toxic to humans. 
A nuclear disaster may be the result of an accident at a nuclear power plant, a disruption of a nuclear power plant by terrorists, or a nuclear bomb or a dirty bomb. The amount of damage to each person depends on the type of radiation, the dose received, the length of the exposure time, and the route of the exposure. Time, distance, and shielding are key to the quantity of radiation that an individual will receive. This is an inflatable decontamination shower for ambulatory victims. The personnel wearing biohazard suits perform a decontamination scrub during a hospital, hospital bioterrorism drill. Key leading agents bind with radioactive material and allow it to be excreted without being absorbed into tissues. Radioactive iodine exposure is treated with potassium iodide, an isotope-specific blocking agent, to prevent the thyroid cancer this type of radiation causes. Excretion agents are used when radioactive material has been ingested. These agents will reduce the time the radio, radiologic material is in the gastrointestinal tract. Diluting agents reduce the concentration of the radioactive material. Water is the best example of a diluting agent. Special precautions need to be used when administering a mobilizing or a diluting agent because the fluids produced could be radiologically contaminated. Bioterrorism involves the deliberate release of microorganisms or toxins derived from living organisms that can cause disease or death to humans or to the animals or plants on which human beings depend on for food. These organisms that cause a high death rate and are easily transmitted are labeled as Category A. Public panic and fear are likely to accompany any breakout. The organisms are invisible to the naked eye and are easily transported without detection. Many of the likely bioterrorism agents do not produce symptoms right away. Category A agents are easily disseminated and some may be transmitted from person to person as well. These can cause mass casualties and require a well-organized and an extensive healthcare system response for management. Category B agents are delivered through water and food sources. These will produce moderate amounts of illness and low death rates. The public health department action is needed for management. Examples are Q fever, brucellosis, ricine toxin. Category C agents have not been weaponized yet, but have the potential for high morbidity and mortality. These agents are plentiful and easy to produce and disseminate. An example would be tick-borne encephalitis, yellow fever, and multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. Anthrax is a category A agent. Botulism is a category A agent. There are five forms of botulism described by how they are obtained. Food-borne, wound, iatrogenic, adult intestinal, and infant botulism. They're all acquired in a similar manner. Plague is a category A agent. The bubonic plague form starts as a skin infection and spreads to the lymph nodes. It is naturally transmitted by infected fleas that bite rodents or people. Smallpox is caused by variola virus. This is highly communicable. It has a high mortality rate and very few people have been vaccinated. Tulamara is a category A agent. 
It is a vector-borne illness that is transmitted by an infected tick, mosquito, or deer fly bite. Hemorrhagic fevers are a group of illnesses caused by four families of viruses. The viruses, which are within Category A agents, can cause Ebola or Lassa hemorrhagic fevers. For a pandemic, individuals need to be prepared to remain within their homes for two weeks and understand that they should maintain a healthy lifestyle, continuously wash their hands, and stay out of any public places.